welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. In this video, we're just going to actually be explaining this principled BSTF, BSDF shader and a little bit of what it does. Um, so first off, I'm just going to go, yeah, I can leave this on EV and just go into this. Uh, you can look at this cube as I'm doing some of these things. Uh, it may seem kind of complicated, this principled BSDF, because there's so many different options, but honestly this is one of the coolest uh, things of Blender recently, is this move to this. There's a thing called PBR shading. Um, it's, it stands for physically based shading, uh, and it, it mimics what the real world is actually like. If you think about like the, a lot of the Pixar movies, they use something very similar to, to this. It, it, it uses a PBR shader, which is physically based shader. Uh, Unreal Engine, if you're familiar with that, uses it as well. Substance Painter uses it. Maya, I'm pretty sure in Arnold, it uses it. Um, I don't think the Blender or the Maya internal one does, but Arnold, I'm pretty sure does. And I'm sure there's other uh, renders out there that do it as well. Um, this isn't going to be an exhaustive list of like what all these things do, but I will go through and hopefully explain what, what some of them, or actually what all of these do to a, a basic level so that you can get started with them. Um, we're just going to look at the inputs though, because the inputs are what you're going to be changing the most. You can change some of these things. Um, honestly, they don't really make a huge, huge difference. Uh, take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, cause some people will, I'm sure, argue that with me. Uh, and the cool thing with all these is they are node based, so you can just keep on adding nodes. Uh, I don't know, like a color ramp, or um, an attribute, or a volume scatter. You can add um, any of these to any of these, which is really cool. So let's first start with the base color. The base color we want to change it, make our cube red, that's what that does. It's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Um, the, the thing with so subsurface, this is, and I don't know actually how EV does this one, um, I think it just kind of tries to mimic it, because this is a little bit more of a calculation intensive thing. Uh, you probably would want to do it in cycles to get a little bit better result, but it may actually do it. I'm not positive. Subsurface is, uh, let's see, the easiest way to think about this is if you look at your skin, you can notice that light somewhat goes through it, but it doesn't at the same time. Uh, if you hold a flashlight up to your fingers, um, and you can notice that the light goes through your fingers to a certain extent, that is, that is subsurface. And the radius uh, would be how much of that, and the color is like what color is the subsurface being. So yeah, that's kind of what that does. You could actually, if you could get the values correct, you could mimic realistic skin using a subsurface section of this input. Metallic, this one was really cool. It came out uh, a few years ago, and this was one of the biggest, I don't know, it was really nice. It was really convenient. So what metallic does is it will now, you can see it kind of did something in, in here. Uh, let me see if I throw in a, a ball, what we can get, and make it smooth. And I'm just going to make a new one here, and do the metallic one. You can see it becomes like aluminum, or or one of those type of materials. And uh, Eevee does a pretty good job of mimicking uh, what this would do in cycles. It would look a lot better in cycles, though. Uh, so yeah, that's a really cool one. And specular. So this one, uh, this one's pretty nice, just because this is like the reflectivity color. Re this is the reflectivity, and this is the reflectivity color. The tint. You can actually like. Let me see if I can. Uh, let's do this one. See if we can get this one to work. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just switch this over to cycles, and we'll just play with it here. Oh yeah, so that. The metallic one looks a lot better. Let's play with the specular now. So specular will just create, let's turn down metallic and make this specular and more. 
so you can, you can barely notice it and it's probably because of the light source that we have within our scene right now but that, that's whatever um, so if we turn down our specularity oh, let's see if I can get a good angle on it it's where the light bounces off of this so maybe if I just push in the light really close yeah okay here we go we're gonna get somewhere now click back on there and so if we turn up uh, where did it go specularity it is that right there I hope you can see it because it is there um, you should try it on your computer though uh, it may be hard to come through on the screencast but essentially what it is is the highlights so yeah and you can turn up you can make the tint different uh, so this, these are two are related to each other sweet so now the roughness is like how sharp that specularity is how sharp the highlights are or in a more technical term it's how rough the edges of your surface are it, it kind of is self-explanatory anastropic is kinda of weird because you'd think it would be positioned up here by the metallic and rotation as well uh, because it's like the anastrop uh, yeah, anastropicity of metallic surfaces. So let's just turn that back down. Turn metallic back up. Wow, that's really metallic now. Um, and we turn on anastropic. It's like on the bottom of a kitchen pan when they have that, when they're circular. Uh, that's really what the anastropicity is doing. And uh, I don't really know how to turn that in. I don't know how that works in different conjugations, but uh, now we can just change the rotation about that with our anastropic rotation. So yeah, that, that's essentially what those two things do. Um, and some of these other ones we don't use a lot, um, but could be very useful. Like the sheen one. Uh, ooh, actually, this one's a red. This will be a perfect opportunity to use sheen. Uh, so sheen can give your object a velvet feel. Uh, depending on your environment, a lot of these things actually are very dependent on your environment. Uh, let's see if we can do that now. So sheen, um, sheen tint. I don't know, you can't really see too much in here, but it, what it's supposed to do is going to give it like a velvet feel. That's what sheen does. Um, so you can play with that setting. Uh, maybe people don't use it because it doesn't seem like they do, like it does much. But it does. It, it, it's just a very subtle thing. But the real good things in life are the subtleties that people pay attention to. Um, sweet. So now let's move on to this clear coat. The clear coat is often not used as well. But this is like if you've ever looked at a car and it has like that little, like it's glossy but it also has like little pieces of like a uh, of reflectivity without it. It's kind of like sparkly. Yeah, actually, that's a good way to put it. This clear coat is like a spark sparkly part of a metallic surface generally, or of like paint. And so you can actually play with these two things and get some of that out of it. Um, maybe a lot of these actually would render better in the full render. Maybe that's why they're not coming through as well. But essentially, that's what those two do, though. The IOR, let's create another object. I'm just going to duplicate it. The IOR is cool because this is this stands for index of reflection. And uh, the cool part about this is, is you can just do, let me pull up in a Google um, thing here. If we type in IOR index of water, we can actually see what the IOR value of certain materials are. Uh, this is nice because you can just copy and paste the IOR value right in here and you will have materials that look feel, that look and feel similar to the material that you're doing um, just with uh, refraction though so this is like things that you see through and you would also have to turn up like the transmission to get that to work uh, but yeah the IOR is super nice uh, I think it's defaults at like I think that's water or maybe nope I guess I just looked at that it's not 1.33 uh, but it's really close and some people's IOR um, 
calculations are probably a little bit different than others, but but this general area is what water would be. Um, so sweet, yeah. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, transmission is the like kind of the opacity of it. Uh, yeah, it's just opacity. That's really what that does, and how rough it is. Sweet. So. Uh, if you have questions, post them in the comments. I, I really hope that this has made sense for the most part. Um, hopefully this didn't make it more confusing up here. Just know that, uh, just going to go recap really quick on a lot of these different things. So if we look at the base color, that's the color of the object. Subsurface is, is the light being scattered within the object. The metallic is how metallic it is. Specularity is the shininess or reflectivity, and the roughness has to do with specularity, but the roughness is how sharp those specular parts are. The anastropicity or anastropic part input here is correlated to the metallic, and it makes it have this uh, brushed look. Sheen is for velvet or similar uh, materials, and the tint is correlating with it. Clear coat is um, like particle uh, glittery looking material on the outside, like paint. If you were to shine light on it, it kind of glitters in the light. Um, and the roughness of that, IOR is the index of refraction and you can just look up numbers online for that. Transmission is the opacity and the roughness has to do with that as well. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more videos and we will see you next time on Blender Know How.